Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MapBreak Studio. Today we're going to look at math. Math, Quant- yes. Quantization. Yes. Which is uh, essentially taking a large set of data and mapping it to a smaller set of data. Well, you know more than I do. I wasn't uh, going to say that. I was going to show what it does. Okay. I, I always yeah. like to think like behind the... Like, I think like quantum jump. Like, like in quantum physics, something goes from one state to another instantaneously. It makes I a see. jump. So there's this thing called the quant quantize. There's a behavior in motion, a parameter behavior called quantize. Okay. And it's something that uh, might not occur to you to use. Why would you want to use it? So I want to give some motivation about why you might want to use it. It does some interesting things. So I, I'm starting with this ham- hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> right before lunch, I might add. <laughs> right before lunch, exactly. We're going to quantize this hamburger. Okay. We're going to have it do some quantum jumping. Um, and this also relates to, you know, if you keyframe something to move, and you want those keyframes, let's just show that very quickly. Like if I were to set keyframes, so I'm gonna move this over here and um, and then I'm gonna turn on recording and move to a later point in time and drag it. And then if I open up the keyframe editor, command eight, you get this smooth curve yeah. that goes from one side to the other. I'm gonna shift Z so you can fit all that in there. Um, so you get the smooth curve or somehow that just, I selected the wrong thing. Hold on one second, let me reselect that hamburger. There we go, there we go. So we've got these curves. But instead of that, if you wanted to be here and suddenly appear over there, you could change these curves to be something different by going to choose interpolation and choose a constant. Okay, so now the thing, the camera's gonna sit there and then we get to the side, boom. That's quantization right. right there. That's quantization right there. So that's a way to do it with keyframes. But I want to show you a way to do it a little differently than that that I think can be more useful in some instances. So F1, I'm just going to reset that guy so I'll get the hamburger back in the beginning. So again, I am going to create some motion. So I'll turn uh, recording back on again. Uh, let me turn it off, actually, and start with the hamburger down here. So we've moved forward in time. Turn recording back on. I'm going to move it up to the top right corner. Turn recording off. And now I have this this smooth, easy motion like we did before, right. okay? But now instead of quantizing it by going into the keyframe editor and changing the interpolation, I'm There's gonna, a behavior. There's a behavior. There's <laughs> like in my, it's, I say it over and over again, but you always need to choose between keyframes and behaviors, right? So here what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna quantize just its Y position. Right. So I'm in the inspector, I've opened up position, and on, I'm gonna right click, or you can use the menu that pops up here next to Y. I'm gonna choose add beha- parameter behavior, Quantize. Quantize, yeah. So I'll select that. And all of a sudden, it's, see, it's kind a of a series of steps. Yeah, it kind of goes, it's bouncing. But there's a step size we can see in the inspector here. So if I increase that step size, okay, it's moving constantly from left to right, but it's suddenly jumping in Y. Right. Does that make sense? It's just mm-hmm. suddenly, so if you made that Y high enough, you would have that same sort of quantum jump, boom. But this is more flexible than well, keyframes. Well, you just take, it is. You know, I could very quickly go through and make that change. And I could apply the same thing. This is properties transform position Y. I could say properties transform position X to apply to X instead. And now it'll do the same thing, but in X. Or properties transform position all and have it in do in both. And now it's just going to appear in different places. It makes me think of, you know, I, I keep, keep going back to like math and quantization. When you bring in an analog signal and you turn it into digital, it's essentially quantizing yes. it. It's turning into a series of Absolutely. steps. So yeah. there'd be like quantization errors that, for example, the, the the resulting sound or what have you did not sound like the original. Yeah. So there's a lot of quantization kind of errors quanti- in this, but you want yeah. this like steppy. Yeah, if you want this steppy kind of thing where something appears yeah. in one place and appears somewhere, if you have a bunch right. of light grids where you want them to one to appear and then to jump to somewhere else, this is an option. And here, here's a little bit more maybe useful scenario is I have this clock animation. Let me play it. Mm-hmm. So, and just to explain uh, how this is built, let's move these out a little bit. So it's all built with elements in motion. Okay, so I've just got this um, a replicator making these hash marks around the edge to represent the at the hours, right? And I've got a shape for the minute hand, the hour hand, and the second hand. Uh, the second hand is animated with a rate parameter behavior that says just spin it around, right. okay? Around a certain axis. Yeah, now the other ones are moving too. In fact, if I take that rate um, and I crank it way up to make it go really fast, uh, it'll make the, actually I've taken the other ones off of this one, sorry. So what I could do is create a, add a link behavior 
to the minute and hour, so they would be linked to this, but go 1 60th or 1 12th uh, and go slower. Um, but I don't really have time to do that now. So the main thing I want to show you is with a lot of clocks with a second hand, it doesn't go around smoothly, right? No, chunk, it'll quantize chunk. to each of the hour marks. Yeah, it kind of chunks or, oh. or to every second. Like right. Every time it makes a second, it kind of, exactly, exactly. Okay. And, and it makes that sound. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to rotation, which is already animated, but I'm just going to right or control click on the word rotation, add parameter behavior. Quantize. Quantize. Sorry. <laughs> You're all over it. You're all over it. <laughs> so quantize, and then the step size is 10 by default. So let's change that to be quite a bit less. Let's try like a 1. Okay, that's, a, that's too much. You kind of have to play with this a little bit. I'm going to hold the option key down and drag, which will allow me to, to go in small steps. Uh, not really. Point <laughs> 0.1. Oh, you didn't get it in there yet. I didn't get try it in again. there, I know. <laughs> yeah, try again, not quite there. hitting it. There Everything's go. so small. And let's make sure we're playing. And there there it's doing maybe even a smaller than that, uh, 0.05. That's, that's a little too subtle to tell at the speed that it's yeah. moving here. But that's all right. We can just make the rate instead of minus 1, minus 0.05, uh, uh, or minus 0.5. Minus 0.5 should do it. No, it was minus one. I think I just wasn't playing. A little trouble typing. 0. 0.5. There we go. There we go. There we go. So now it's just it's that. That's the main thing I wanted to show is you can make anything rotation, position, any kind of parameter. You can quantize it, and here this sort of imitates the real world look of a right. clock moving around. So if I show Sorry. you an ending version of this, I do have a version of it when it's when it's done just so you can kind of see how the whole thing moves. So here I've got uh, all the hands linked together to each other so that as the second hand moves, the hour hand and the minute hand change appropriately. And a little hard to tell at this rate, but we can just, because these are behaviors, it's real easy to go in and adjust the rate, uh, the rate of animation. So in this case, I'll just spin that guy up. And now oh, you can oh, see. Oh, nice. Yeah, so now you can see time going quite a bit faster. I'm making them go faster. And now, of course, you can't see the quantization. In fact, you're getting some kind of strobing going on from seeing that second hand go so fast. So if you really <laughs> were going to do it this fast, maybe you turn the second hand off uh, or turn on motion blur. But you get an idea of how you can see uh, how you can see that move. Fantastic. Okay. So that's a, just an example of how you can use a behavior you might not think about. Uh, well, I mean, what's really nice is that people are using motion and they're like, I wonder what that does. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We I should. Guess. In fact. That would actually be a good tutorial called, I wonder what that oh, does. Right. <laughs> Sorry. And we just take yeah. all of the really obscure yeah. esoteric things like, I wonder what that, I wonder what that does. Yeah. And we just... And hopefully find a useful way. Uh, no, it. Sometimes I, it's like, oh, that is a cool thing. I don't know if I'd ever use it. But I think this is something, it's kind of like the uh, the clamper we looked at earlier. Right. right. There's 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 very useful ways to use some of this stuff. And now you, you have it in mind. Hopefully you have it in mind next time you're doing something and you realize that you're keyframing and you're trying to do constant keyframes. It's like, oh, wait, maybe there's another way with the behavior. Excellent. Well, uh, you just saw um, an excellent use of quantization. Oh, and we're even out of time. Oh, we are, oh, yeah, we are out of time. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and uh, check out Mark's excellent series of motion tutorials. He's like, there's no one better than Mark when explaining this stuff, as you well know. Um, thanks for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.